certain countries kind of age faster than other countries, right? And I, I know in your book you kind of talk about like Russia versus Israel versus America, and they tend to rack up the years, you know, sooner than later. What, what's what, which kind of like top G twenty countries are better or worse than others, and why typically is that? Well, it's mostly lifestyle. Uh, we're all very similar genetically as a species. Some you know, there are some good genes. Um, the, the Japanese in, in general have some pretty good genes, longevity genes, but. Across humanity, uh, there are lots of genes that people have. The difference that uh, that actually um, we've noticed is that about eighty to ninety percent of longevity and health into our eighties, nineties, and beyond is due to how we live our lives across the planet. And there are certain cultures that, uh, for historical reasons mainly, have uh, the type of lifestyles that turn on the body's defenses against aging. Now, we, we all know that if we exercise and move and eat less often and focus on plants, that tends to be associated with longer life, as well as lower stress and more sociable uh, communities. These are all things that make us live longer. And there are pockets of that around the world. There's areas of Greece and Japan, uh, US, uh, Australia. These are countries that tend to have a healthier diet, more community, exercise more, partially because of the climate, partially maybe because they're they're working on farms. But generally, uh, it's all about lifestyle. And one of the things I've been trying to do, besides my medical research and developing medicines to help people, is to say, all right, the medicines are coming, the pills are coming. Until then, we need to stay alive for longer. And how do you do that? It's make sure we try it at least try to mimic those cultures uh, and get our bodies to fight aging rather than just deteriorate, which is what a lot of modern society is built on. Brian, what one of the problems with the world that we have now, particularly in the West and even worse in the UK and, uh, and the US is that we like to be comfortable and the markets have given us a very comfortable life, those of us who can afford it. And the problem is that that switches off our body's defenses against aging not exercising, don't eat well, always being satisfied with the amount of food we have, never being hungry. That's the worst you can have because our aging rate just accelerates with that kind of lifestyle. It's, it, do most people look at you funny when you say, if you can be kind of starving, if you can be out of breath, if you can be <laughs> cold, then you're gonna live this long life. And people are probably looking at you and saying, well, a hundred years ago, my grandparents were doing the same thing or my great grandparents. and they didn't live very long. Is it hard to get people's brain around that? Well, it does appear to be a contradiction until you really dig in and find out that, yes, eating less often was good for you uh, and being cold can be good for you and being hot um, and and not having as much uh, food, being thinner is generally good for you to a point. The problem with our great grandparents and, and even grandparents was that then they were not doing it in a way that was uh, conducive to longevity in the sense that they didn't get the right nutrition. And they were also plagued by uh, infections. Uh, and you know, you look at the risks from a hundred years ago, childbirth was killing people, cancer was killing people, heart disease was, was rife because of the type of food, uh, a lot of fat people were eating. But if you combine the adversity or at least mimicking adversity that they had in their lives with adequate nutrition and modern medicine, that is what we believe gives you the longest life. And the important thing is it's, you know, a lot of these adversities don't have to be extreme. They can be a little bit of what doesn't kill you, makes you stronger and longer lived. We call this process hormesis. And it really, it's, it's not about feeling like you're, you're gonna die or that you're gonna starve. It's about giving your body a few of those hints, a little bit of exercise, even just five, 10 minutes a day, a little bit of hunger, skip a meal each day and substitute with tea and coffee. These are the things that actually over the long run build up to give you maybe an extra 10, even 20 years of extra life. David, I gotta ask you a question. We're seeing these days, they're like, you know, these, these real quests and, and cravings by parts of humanity for these extreme lifestyles. You know, I've had Wim Hof on the show who jumps in the ice baths and has the breathing. I've had David Goggins on here who does these ultra marathons and 
you know, we see people celebrating these extremes in life. I mean, do you think there's something deep down inside of us that, 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 that is trying to tell us that we need to kind of push the limits of humanity while we're all sit, also trying to sit in business class and, you know, drive in the Range Rover and all that stuff? Have you ever thought about that, you know? We, oh, for sure. We as humans, we're not built for a comfortable lifestyle. Our bodies just fall apart if we give them too much of a good time. I call that the abundance mode. And I, I mentioned earlier the adversity mode. You've got to cycle between the two because one is the abundance mode is build and repair, but the, the adversity is um, hunker down and survive. And if you don't have both of those, then you're just not going to slow down aging and live long. And I think there is an inbuilt desire for many of us to get back into more of that adversity mode. Uh, we feel better, we have more energy, we think better. Um, and that's because what happens when you're in this adversity mode, at least for part of the day or part of the week, is that our bodies turn on these survival genes, some of which I study in my lab called sirtuins. Without those, we become lethargic and our bodies have a much less uh, metabolic activity, much less uh, mental acuity. Uh, we put on weight, we don't feel as good. So I think what, what Wim Hof, Dave Goggins and others, what they're trying to do is get back to our evolutionary roots where we spend at least part of the day turning on these survival genes that made us feel better, work better, live better, um, and even think better. Um, and I also, you know, what, what they, they often tell us is that if we live these lifestyles, we also psychologically feel better. We feel better about ourselves, but also the hormones and the the molecules that are released in the brain make us more optimistic, make us happier, make us uh, more alive. And that's also what I think drives those guys or those people and many of us to give some adversity during the, have some adversity during the day. Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. We took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. It's of course been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.